So I've taken three pictures here. Now why I've taken three uh, pictures because in these three images I can tell you about the, the four tracks here. Okay. Now let's say this is a spinal cord guys. Let's take the other one. Let's say this is a spinal cord here. <clears throat> if I talk about the spinothalamic tract here first. I want all of you to just pay attention to this part guys. If this is a spinothalamic tract, let me, let me explain that to you. Now what we discussed in the spinothalamic tract that the dorsal root ganglia will come inside, the DRG will come inside and it will relay in the spinal cord and the decusation will take place. The second order neuron will decusate at the level of the spinal cord only. That's what we said. Whether it is anterior spinothalamic tract or lateral spinothalamic tract the decusation is taking place at the level of the spinal cord, at the level of spinal cord. But what you can note from this picture is that decusation is not taking place exactly at the level here. It is taking two to three segment to decusate. If my dorsal root ganglia comes inside, let's say at the level of T7. So decusation is also not at the T7. The by the time it decusate, it might be T5 or T4. So it takes around two to three segment to decusate obliquely. It takes around two to three segment to decusate obliquely and then ascend on the contralateral side. So this is the spinothalamic tract you're looking at here. That's a second order neuron of spinothalamic tract which is going decusating and going above here. And this marked region here it shows the brown sequared syndrome. It shows the brown sequared syndrome. Now I want you people just to focus on only on the spinothalamic tract. If it is a case of brown sequared syndrome at a particular level, what will happen? Now those dorsal root ganglia which are carrying, as I said, just the spinothalamic tract guys, those dorsal root ganglia which are carrying pain, temperature, crude touch and pressure, pain, temperature, crude touch and pressure will come inside and that part is already affected here, brown, brown sequared syndrome. So obviously there will be a ipsilateral guys, there will be a ipsilateral loss of crude touch, pressure, pain and everything exactly at the level of lesion. I am not talking about above the lesion or below the lesion, at the level, at the level of lesion there will be ipsilateral loss. Don't draw anything, just, just listen to this because if you because there are some few things which I will, will which I'll rub it off here. But look at these fibers. Those fibers which will be coming from below here, they are safe because they can cross over to this side. They will ascend upward. They will cross over to this side. They will ascend upward. So they are all safe. So at the level of lesion, there will be ipsilateral loss, but nothing below at the level of lesion because the fiber will decusate and safely can go above here. Let me rub this off. What Ex opposite the level of lesion. No, exactly opposite to the level of lesion is also safe. Why? Because opposite the level of lesion, the fiber will come like this. They will decusate obliquely and that's why they will be safe and going above here. You can see that they are not affected by the syndrome here. So exactly at the opposite to the level lesion, the pain, crude touch, pressure, whatever the fiber come inside, that will decusate obliquely, will skip this part, will, will bypass this part here and will go into the thalamus safely. So nothing will happen on the contralateral side at the level of lesion guys. Again, I'm not talking about above below at the level of lesion, ipsilateral effect is there, but contralateral effect is not there at the level of lesion contralateral effect is not there. But now look at this part here. Those fibers which are present below the level of lesion on the contralateral side, all these fiber which are contralateral side here. Now they even if they decusate obliquely, they have to go through this part here. They have to go through this part here. That means there will be contralateral loss of pain, temperature, crude touch and pressure where below the level of lesion. So in brown sequared syndrome, if you just think of spinothalamic tract, there is a ipsilateral loss at the level of lesion, at the level of lesion and there is a contralateral loss but below the level of lesion, below the level of lesion here. And we know that what spinothalamic tract is carrying, let me drop this off guys, what spinothalamic tract is carrying, it is carrying the pain, temperature, crude touch and pressure. So I can say there will be ipsilateral loss of pain, temperature, crude touch and pressure. Ipsilateral loss of pain, temperature, crude touch and pressure. at the level of lesion, exactly where the lesion is, exactly at the level of lesion and contralateral loss of same thing, all those things where below the level of lesion. Below the 
below the level of region that's spinothalamic tract is the main main question in the brown sequoid syndrome in the brown sequoid syndrome they ask you about this the spinothalamic tract mainly so remember that there will be ipsilateral loss at the level of lesion and there will be contralateral loss below the level of lesion of the spinothalamic tract and you already know what spinothalamic tract is carrying it's pain temperature crude touch and pressure okay let me take you to the second one guys the second one here is representing two tracts here it is representing the spinothalamic tract and dorsal column tract also say i told you spinocerebellar tract is running on the same side ventral spinocerebellar tract went to the other side but it came ultimately to the same side only and look at the that's the dorsal column tract guys dorsal column tract is coming inside without relaying in the spinal cord we know that it runs as fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cunatus that's a dorsal column tract we are looking into the second part second picture here in the dorsal column tract we know that dorsal root ganglia it comes in and will continue the journey inside as fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cunatus which are going to relay in the nucleus which are present in the middle oblongata the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cunatus are in the middle oblongata here we are talking about brown sequoid syndrome which is affecting the spinal cord because of it now what will happen look at this in this case here so that means once again exactly at the level of lesion the dorsal column tract is involved so there will be ipsilateral loss of the dorsal column tract at the level of lesion in fact whatever is below the level of lesion they also have to go like this only now whatever is below the level of lesion they also have to go through this part that means there is not only ipsilateral loss at the level of lesion there is a complete ipsilateral loss at the level and also below the level of lesion because all these fiber has to go through this affected part only and thankfully nothing on the opposite side because this tract is not decussating at the level of spinal cord so nothing happens to the opposite side it's all about ipsilateral here it's all about ipsilateral so there will be ipsilateral loss of now see ipsilateral loss of what what is carried by the dorsal column tract and also by the spinocerebellar tract because spinocerebellar tract i'm telling here only ipsilateral loss of proprioception ipsilateral loss of proprioception fine touch guys crude touch was there it's fine touch fine touch vibration stereognosis where at the level and also below the level of lesion at the level and below the level of lesion as well at the level and below the level of lesion so there will be effect here as well as below that part here got that part so the ipsilateral loss at the level of lesion and also below the level of lesion so whether it is dorsal column even same for the spine i just wrote proprioception i did not write conscious or unconscious because the same story is for the spinocerebellar tract also spinocerebellar tract ultimately is going to the same side only so whether it is conscious proprioception or unconscious proprioception it is a ipsilateral loss it's an ipsilateral loss and finally the pyramidal tract then i'll i'll tell you about collectively also at in but see pyramidal tract guys here this is the pyramidal tract in case of pyramidal tract now we have to see in a reverse direction guys it's a descending tract we are talking about here the descending tract now this obviously we know the pyramidal tract guys it decussates at the level of the lower middle oblongata so it is already decussated once it is coming to the spinal cord it is decussated already and we are talking about only lateral cortico spinal tract see lateral cortico spinal tract supplies the limb muscles not the axial muscle when we talk about hemiplegia and all we generally pay attention to the limb muscles upper limb and lower limb muscle here so this tract is already decussated we know that it decussated at the level of the lower middle oblongata it is already decussated so that means this is a up, now this is a upper motor neuron because it is running in the spinal cord that's a upper motor neuron here and obviously the one which are coming out of the spinal cord these are lower motor neuron that's a lower motor neuron that's a lower motor neuron you can draw as many as you want here just to tell you one thing guys if this is a brown sequoid syndrome now in the brown sequoid syndrome i can see that there is a involvement of lower motor neuron at the level of lesion 
at the level of lesion lower motor neuron is affected here below the level of lesion lower motor neurons are fine they are fine no, no problem there but their upper motor neuron is affected here so at the level of lesion it's a lower motor neuron lesion and below the level of lesion lower motor neurons are fine it's a upper motor neuron lesion will be there here that's why that's why and we all know that in lower motor neuron lesion there is a flaccid paralysis and upper motor neuron lesion there is a the spastic paralysis so guys because of the pyramidal tract involvement because of the pyramidal tract involvement there will be ipsilateral ipsilateral flaccid paralysis at the level of lesion at the level of lesion right exactly at the level of lesion there is a flaccid paralysis and there will be ipsilateral again ipsilateral only spastic paralysis spastic paralysis where below the level of lesion below the level of lesion. ipsilateral flaccid paralysis at the level of lesion and ipsilateral spastic paralysis below the level of lesion below the level of lesion guys so obviously it's all ipsilateral where which, whichever side is injured obviously only that side neurons are affected because decussion has already taken place here but the important thing is at the level of lesion lower motor neurons are affected rest of the lower motor neurons are fine their upper motor neurons are going from that part here from the from the brown squared area and that's why upper motor neuron lesion will be there so flaccid paralysis at the level and spastic paralysis below the level of lesion will be there so ultimately if you look at the brown squared syndrome in in one glance the entire thing you can see in sorry if you look at this entire brown squared syndrome in one glance guys based on the spinothalamic tract there was a ipsilateral loss if you look at this part here there was a ipsilateral loss exactly at the level of lesion which is there in all the cases guys in the brown squared syndrome at the level of lesion ipsilateral loss will be there but only at the level so there is a ipsilateral loss of the pain temperature crude touch and pressure at the level of lesion and contralateral but below the level of lesion not at the level below the level of lesion here dorsal column tract and even spinocerebellar tract they are affected here and these two tracts are mainly carrying the sensation to the same side only they are running to the same side in the spinal cord at least so there will be ipsilateral loss of conscious ipsilateral loss of proprioception simply say fine touch vibration what, whatever is carried by dorsal column tract at the level of lesion and also below the level of lesion because these fiber also have to go on from this affected area here again the interesting part is pyramidal tract in the pyramidal tract lower motor neurons are affected so there is a ipsilateral flaccid paralysis at the level of lesion but in the lower part lower motor neurons are fine so there is a upper motor neuron affected so there is a spastic paralysis below the level of lesion ipsilateral if the injury is to the right side obviously the paralysis will be of the right side only if the left side only left side yeah so that's about the brown sequoid syndrome that's about the brown sequoid syndrome